In the previous video, we started thinking abstractly about the communications problem, and we drew this little diagram here to represent the sort of pipeline of the different parts in the process. And each of them was in one of these boxes. And we talked about the source channel separation theorem, which was a very tidy little result that allowed us to decouple the combined problem of source coding and channel coding into the, the, the separate problems of defining a source coder and a channel coder. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some real world examples of, of this, this sort of pipeline and see what would go in each of these boxes to make this very sort of concrete in your mind. So I'll keep that there for reference. And we're gonna start off here with a nice little example from the applications video. So we'll, our first example will be the pale blue dot image from Voyager. So we have our source, and in this case, the source is going to be the image of Earth, that picture of Earth on the Voyager vehicle. And that image, while we're still on the vehicle, is going to go to a compression algorithm. And so they're going to compress that image. And, and one of the algorithms that they used is an algorithm called difference mapping. Now, of course, you know, any real world, any real world example that I give in this little video is going to be grossly oversimplified. So there, there are many, many more parts that are, that are going on in this process, but just to give you a feel for, for the general, the big picture. So you're going to pass this to some compression algorithm. This thing is going to it's going to look at the image and it's going to say, hey, that part looks a lot like that part. I'm going to combine those two parts or something along those lines. So it's going to compress the image. And then still on the Voyager vehicle, this is going to be passed to a Reed Solomon Viterbi encoder. And this will be transforming that compressed image into a form that will be able to be transmitted very robustly through the vastness of space. So the, the channel here, the noisy channel, is space and it's, well, it's electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves traveling through space. And, uh, you know, of course, th when the vehicle sent that image, it was beyond Neptune. So that was about, it was about 6 billion kilometers from Earth at that point. Roughly three and a half, roughly three and a half billion miles. And it took about five and a half hours just for those electromagnetic waves, those, that signal to go from the Voyager vehicle back to Earth. So it's a lot of lots of potential for errors to be introduced. And those errors were introduced, but then when the when the signal was received on Earth, it was passed to a Reed Solomon Viterbi decoder. And from there, the output of that went to a decompression algorithm corresponding to this difference mapping thing. I'll just say decompression. And by the way, I, I think that, you know, I know I, I, I've read that they used this on the Voyager 2 for the Uranus photos. I don't know about the Earth photos for sure, but but anyway, you, you get the point. And finally, this ends up in a image file on somebody's computer on Earth. So we started out on Voyager and at long last we get back to our image on Earth in somebody's computer. So that's one example of this whole sort of process. And there's lots more going on in between, but just to give you a feel for it. And now here's another example. We'll do several examples here. Let's say, let's think about your internet connection. Your internet connection. Say you have a, you're say con directly connected to a router or modem and you're getting your connection through that router. So you have your computer over here 
And that's going to be a source and you're going to send a message. Your computer is sending messages and now we're going to skip the compression part and jump straight to the error correction part, the, the channel coding part. Your computer, I'll just write it here, or maybe I'll put this. Your computer is sending those messages in a, in a format which is encoded using the Ethernet, Ethernet protocols so that when it gets sent over the cable, it's just going from one part of the room to the other. It's just going over a cable. Usually it's a Cat5 cable. Those, you know, those blue Ethernet cables. And then when it gets to your router over here, you, your router or modem has a little Ethernet decoding algorithm. It's going to take those Ethernet packets and decode them. And then that all, now we're, we're inside the router or modem. And now it's, well, it's, I guess, well, it's finally at the router or modem. This is inside the router or modem too, but now it's, it's ready to be sent somewhere else. Okay, so that's another little example. So, you know, you may skip one or two, both of these parts. You may skip the compression part and you may skip the, uh, the uh, error correction part. So here's a third example. In both of these, the, the, the source and the destination were different locations, but they could actually be essentially the same location. This, this channel doesn't have to be physically, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be physically moving messages or moving stuff through space. It could actually just be a single location. So for example, let's say you're, you're gonna rip a CD, rip a CD and play it. Rip a CD and play it. So in this case, you're, you know, you've got your CD in your computer and your computer is reading the CD. So you have the little CD reader and then it goes to your, your, uh, you know, whatever program you have that, that uh, looks at the CD and it's going to convert it to an MP3 format, say, for example. And then from the MP3, oh, I used the wrong color. I'm sorry. Try to be consistent here. MP3. And then it's going to put that, it then it's going to write that to your disk. And to write to the disk, it's going to use cyclic redundancy checks and read Solomon. Perhaps it'll use read Solomon Viterbi codes if you've got a nice, nice, uh, you know, nice system. It'll convert that MP3 file into a, a nice, more robust file that can be stored on your disk and then and read off again without making errors. So this will go to your disk drive. Disk drive, your hard, hard disk, hard disk. will get written to your hard disk. And that is the channel now. The hard disk is the channel. So it's just, it's not moving stuff around. The, the messages are just on there. And then we're going to read them off again. So we're going to read them off. You're going to undo what you did here with the CRC and the RSV. And by the way, CRCs are just used for error detection. They're very often used in, in this type of situation, but they only give you error detection. They don't actually give you error correction. So this is a slightly different, I mean, this is slightly different from the forward error correction situation because you might actually, if you detect an error, you might try to read it again or something like that. So it's maybe a little bit, a little bit different than the general, than the the sort of situation we talked about. But the RSV is, is, is more along those lines. And then of course you have, so you're gonna read that, that file off your disk and you're going to want to play it. So you need to, you need to go back from, this was a MP3 encoder, which took that original sort of sound that was, that, or you know, whatever the, the format, the, the, the sort of um, sound signals that the CD reader was reading 
and it encoded them in MP3, and now you need to decode that MP3 back into sound signals, back to audio. And that will go to your speakers or your headphones, and then eventually to your ears to hear your song. And let's do one more example here. I think you're going to be very, very familiar with, with these ideas. So let's say you're going to talk over Skype, maybe even over some 3G or 4G, let's say 4G. So you've got a nice 4G wireless connection. Maybe you're at the, at the cafe or something. So over here, you've got your laptop and maybe you've got a little webcam on your laptop and this gets converted into an MPEG the little little picture and of you and you talking is getting converted into MPEG format when you're using this application and actually uh, for the audio uh, Skype uses something they have a little technology called silk which uses arithmetic coding for the audio, for the voice over IP. And then you're, you're, you're using this 4G wireless connection. So this is going to, let's make our green. So this is going to be your MPEG is got to be transmitted over this 4G connection. So you need to make these 4G messages in the right 4G format. And in fact, like we talked about, 4G uses turbo code, so that's nice. That's kind of cool. So you get your nice messages here, and they are transmitted through the electromagnetic waves. So we have electromagnetic waves through the air to whatever the cell tower or whatever the the you know hot spot or whatever that you're at. And then of course at the tower or or the you know the little receiver for that that wireless connection you have to have a 4G decoder it's going to take those those electromagnetic waves and that were encoded in the 4G format and they are going to decode them back into back into sort of regular internet signals because they're going to be sent over the internet to your friend so this is going to now go to, so we're going to have multiple steps here. So this, is, this, this example is to illustrate that, of course, you know, it's not just this canonical sort of situation. You can have multiple sort of, you know, you can chain these things together. So now this is going to be encoded. Maybe I'll put it on another line. This is going to be now in, encoded. Actually, it's going to be green. We're going to have another step in the process. Now we have some internet, I don't know, whatever, some, whatever, some, some sort of format that's being sent over the internet. Uh, maybe this is internet encoder, some sort of packets. And then, you, of course, you have your internet itself. You know, it's being sent from one computer to another to your friend's location and finally it gets to your friend's location and it maybe his router or something over here is is decoding those messages router or modem on the other end and then you have to decode these this mp3 so now he's at his computer and he's got m or rather mpeg so he's got an mpeg decoder mpeg decoder and at long last, it gets to displayed to your friend's screen and and speaker and and played on his speaker his or her speakers, and he sees and hears you, your friend. So of course, you know you can have there can be many many steps, and in fact, even in in these this even though I put another step in here, there's 
are many, many other steps in between all of these probably that are that are you know more things along these lines, more compression and error correction and coding and decoding that are happening. Even inside the computer, you know, here as he's, he's receiving this and he's probably writing it to the RAM and using some sort of encoding, error correction encoding there. So there's lots, even lots, lots more going on than even what I've drawn here. But hopefully this starts to give you a sense of, you know, so you can start to think a little more concretely about what each of these steps in the process are, what they are doing in sort of real life. And to think about uh, some you know, some sort of um, give you some concrete examples to understand what's going on at each of these steps.